Hey everybody, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Justin Rogers. Uh, we're just over a week away from the first round of cuts, Justin. Uh, 15 guys got to go by uh, 4 p.m. next Tuesday. Um, they got uh, cut 37 players by the start of the season. We re-released our first uh, projections for the 53-man roster this week and generated a lot of discussion. Um, what, what was the hardest choice, the toughest choice for you when you were making your projection? There was a lot of them. I think yeah. I think we agree we both got stuck in several spots. Um, you know, wide receiver was a, was a real tough one for mm -hmm. me. Corey Fuller was was one of the last guys that I, I chopped. It was a pretty unpopular decision. There was there was definitely some themes in our comments. Yeah. Uh, but there's people really dogging on Chris Durham. Yeah. There's there's seven guys for six spots there, and and Durham and Fuller is is the competition. It's yeah. it's not Ogletree. It's not Broyles. It's yeah. it's those two. They have. Uh, similar builds, sim not entirely similar builds, but they they play the same role in the offense. Durham, you you know what you get, you, you know what you're going to get in terms of production. He had some drop issues last year, but uh, durable. He's got speed. He's got great size. You saw the touchdown he caught against mm -hmm. Oakland. That's what he offers. He offers mm -hmm. a red zone threat and a, a Calvin backup, even though he's 20% the player Calvin <laughs> is. Uh, Broyles is is or, I'm sorry, not Broyles, but um, Fuller. Fuller, thank you. Fuller offers potential. He's got great speed, size is good, his hands has improved, his release has improved. He's a player on the rise, uh, but but still behind um, Durham on the depth chart. We haven't seen how he'd perform against a top flight cornerback, a first team cornerback. So, you know, what you're seeing the success in the preseason games is against these third stringers, and it's it's not really fair to make that comparison. Uh, so I have, I have Fuller just missing the cut behind Durham. I talked to uh, Durham before practice today, and I asked him point blank, how do you feel like you played last year? He's like, I know I have a lot of things to work on. I know I didn't play very well. And it's true. I mean, if you look at any of the stats or any of the metrics, he, he wasn't very effective. Uh, at the same time, I think he was asked to do a lot, and, and maybe more than what he's capable. I mean, he was the number two with Burleson out for, for much of that season. I just don't think that he's... Uh, gifted enough uh, to, that I don't think he has the skill set to be that kind of player at this level at number two. I think asking him to do less with Golden Tate in the fold now and, and Calvin back to full health, I think that'll be good for a guy like Durham. And I, I think he can be a very valuable role player uh, in this offense. He was the la one of the last guys in for me, and Corey Fuller was one of the last guys out. So I'm with you there. Yeah, I mean, we Durham is a five or a six, and his role is limited. He's only playing a handful of snaps mm -hmm. in a game and, and more of a red zone threat. You know, fans aren't hating on him so much because he's succeeding in his role. Mm -hmm. You ask him to play almost a thousand. He played more snaps than Calvin Johnson last year. Yep. He played more snaps than anyone. <laughs> Chris Durham should not be doing that. He's yeah. not that talented. He's a, a decent player who's a role yeah. player, not a, a star player. And yeah, yeah. And we, we saw what he can do against uh, Oakland. I mean, that was a great catch he had. You know, defender had illegal hands to his face and everything, and he still still pulled it in. It wasn't it's a great play. throw. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we agreed there. We disagreed a little bit on the um, offensive backfield, and I wanted to touch on that because that for me was really difficult. Uh, obviously, Reggie Bush and Joyke Bell and Theo Riddick are all making the team, but then it's kind of a, a, a it's up in the air who makes a team behind those guys. And you know, coming into camp, I thought Mike Kelly Shore had a really good opportunity to, to contribute. Uh, Martin Mayhew said he expected him to, to compete for a job, and I just haven't seen enough from LaShore throughout camp, throughout the preseason, to give him a roster spot. I, I, I cut him from my team, my, my 53. I, I don't know what value he would serve on this team. He hasn't been a very good rusher the past two years, and he does nothing on special teams. Whereas a guy like George Wynn, who no one, no one heard of coming into camp, has impressed a lot of folks with, with the way uh, he's rushed the ball throughout camp, the tenacity, the physical style. And, of course, there's the two fullbacks to consider, Jed Collins and Montel Owens. And on mine, I, I had uh, I had Jed Collins making the team because of what he can do in the passing game. I've seen a lot of stuff like that uh, in, in practice, and I think that's something Lombardi wants to use. Um, so I think that he would be a good fit for the offense. And then I had George Wynn, and I, I think that's maybe a long shot for happening, but I think his skill set is something that could be used on this team. And, and, and given the fact he started on a couple of special teams in Oakland, it's very apparent the Lions are considering him. Um, and so that, that's the way I went. Yeah, no, I, I think Wynn's practice squad bound. I think they want to see more from him because of the case where injuries are going to happen. If, if he is on the practice squad, he'd be, you know, the next man up. Uh, his route running is, is still very underdeveloped. He didn't have to do it in college. Special teams is brand new to him, although he looked awesome, made a couple mm -hmm. stops. Uh, the first one we plowed right through a guy <laughs> was what you really want to see. You want to see high effort, high intensity, and, and limited mistakes on special teams. Uh, I, I look at Owens as... I don't, I don't want to say a lock, but, you know, trending toward that way. He's on the leadership council of the team. Uh, he was in the first group of captains for the first game. 
and and he's not a traditional fullback in a sense. He's a an all pro special teamer. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's been nominated a couple of Pro Bowls. He he showed why in, in the very first preseason game against yeah. the Browns, uh, and. As a running back or, or fullback, he can do a little bit of everything. He averaged five yards a carry his last time he was asked to, to have an extensive load in, in Jacksonville. It's only like 50 or 60 carries, but he showed he was capable. He can block. Uh, we both like Collins because he's got about 20 pounds on Owens, and, and when you really need a guy to, to clip a, a defensive end yep. you know, on the backside, Collins is going to be the guy that physically can handle that better than any of them. Uh, so I, I see win on the roster, but just on the practice squad, and and we yeah. agree. Lashore hasn't done enough, despite Caldwell, despite his position coach, despite Mayhew, all saying there's a role there. Yeah. Our, our our eyes say no. So you so you took two fullbacks in the top three of Riddick, Bush, and Bell, and then I took Bush, uh, Bush, Riddick, and Bell, uh, plus one fullback and and win. So we got. We, we both cut Michael LaShore, but we got there in different ways, and yeah. I think that speaks to how unimpressive LaShore's been. I just, you know, he's a second-round pick. He carries a lot of cachet for, for that reason, and he's a big name around here. But this is a new staff, and I think I think they're, they're going to be willing to send a message that, that, that if you don't play well, you're going to get cut. You're not going to make it. And he has not played well. I have no idea what kind of value he would offer the team on the 53-man roster. I mean, we saw him in start a training camp working with the first team. It's it's not that way anymore. He was working with the third team against Oakland. Mm-hmm. It, it signifies what we've been telling you. He's dropping down the depth chart, and, and there's a reason. Still dancing way too much in the backfield, not hitting the holes with authority yet. I think maybe a nice run at the very end of the game against third stringers, but not breaking tackles, not, not doing enough to, to merit a job mm-hmm. there's some other tough um, tough picks for us uh, I know that Daryl Tapp and uh, Travis Lewis was another tough one um, they play different positions uh, obviously uh, Lewis is a linebacker and Tapp is a, a defensive lineman but Tapp has played in, played linebacker before he's played a lot in the three uh, in the three four including last year for Washington um, you know and it kind of it's really difficult to say which guy makes the team but it's probably going to be an either or scenario I can't really see both making the team yeah I just I don't they've carried 10 defensive linemen before with with Schwartz and Cunningham that was kind yeah. of a thing but I, I don't think there's room for for that in this system uh, it was a coin flip for me. I think you described it the same way. Yep. Uh, of, of all the guys I put on the roster, Travis Lewis was the one I was least confident about. Uh, we agree George Johnson has played himself onto the roster. Yep. He's another yep. guy that's worked really way surprising. On- yeah, yeah, played really well. Um, both preseason games, training camp, he's, he shows explosiveness. He can contribute on special teams. Um, I, I think he's the fourth DE in the rotation now uh, ahead of of Larry Webster, who they're going to keep as a developmental guy. So it comes down to Tapper Lewis. Lewis has offered plenty on special teams in the last couple of years. Uh, he's continued that role in training camp in the preseason. Usually when guys are working with a first team special teams for the duration of camp, I, I feel pretty confident about those mm-hmm. uh, that guy's roster spot, and, and Lewis mm-hmm. has continued in that role. So that's, that's why I went with him. Over tap. Yeah, I saw as a coin flip. I went with with tap. I've like what I've seen from him on defense. He he contributes more on defense than what uh, Travis Lewis would. And you have to consider the the linebacker group is very deep for the the lines. You have entrenched starters with with Levy and with Tolick. Uh, you have Ashley Palmer and, and Van Noy both at the, at the at the strong side. That's a lot of guys who are going to play a lot of snaps. And you still got to hear Whitehead in there as your special team standout. And so you know I don't, I'm not sure if you need to carry a sixth linebacker. And I, I think Tap could play more of a defensive role. And with the, all these varied fronts, the lines want to use from the front seven he could be a useful tool in that way as well the last battle i wanted to mention was obviously a kicker and that's something that's been that's been written about quite a bit throughout camp which i think is kind of a signifier that that it's been a good relatively drama free camp for the lions when you're talking about the kicker battle uh it's relatively it's important but in the grand scheme of things it's minor as compared to some other things sometimes but obviously nate freeze the draft pick has been um up and down at best, I would say, and, and Giorgio Tavecchio has, you know, he's on a futures deal. He was the underdog. He's still taking this, the the second reps behind Freeze, um, but he's out kicked Freeze. And I'm just curious what your impressions are from that battle. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't even call it unimportant. You know, it, I think it gets lost in the shuffle with fans sometimes. But you have a bad kicker in in a league where majority of games are decided by one score. It, you're setting yourself up for failure in those one score games. Uh, Tavecchio is clearly out kick freeze in camp it's it's not really been that close right. uh if if we were going strictly by the practices that we see then you know it, it's not a competition but uh you know freeze missed a, an extra point i think that's kind of damning and then comes out and and hits the most difficult field goal you're probably going to see in the yeah. preseason a 55 yarder into the wind off of dirt and from the dirt yeah, yeah so 
um, you know, I think that that salvaged that performance for him. It, it kind of maybe will inject some life into this competition. But if if we're going to be honest, and and this is a clean slate, and everybody just is makes the roster based on their production and performance alone, to, it should be Tavecchio's job. Yeah, I spoke to Tavecchio after the game in Oakland. Actually, was in the, the their little interview room was in the um, the A's weight room, which is just speaks to how. I can't say what it, what it is, but the Coliseum out there in Oakland, it's pretty... Uh, uh, th- Dumpy. Yeah. Dumpy. That's something yeah. that's family-friendly. Um, but no, but he was saying that kick from the dirt was particularly impressive because the, the dirt you can't, the kicker can't plant quite as nicely. And so it, it really does change a lot of what you have to do, and it makes the kick difficult, on top of it being from 55 yards into the wind. Um, so I think he impressed a lot of folks. Freeze impressed a lot of folks by hitting that kick. And we know he has a talented leg. There's a reason he was 20 for 20 at Boston College, and there's a reason he was drafted. At the same time, he missed a, a PAT, and I think that speaks to just how inconsistent he's been throughout camp. And if you know, if I'm if I'm GM, uh, God forbid, you know, I'm going with the guy who is going to be more consistent. And at this point, that's Ben Tavecchio, hands down, from what we've seen. And if if everything stays the same through now through the end roster cuts and and Freeze makes this team, I'd be extremely interested to know what kind of uh, intangibles or X factors were made in that decision because if you're just looking at made and missed kicks, it's Tavecchio's job. Yeah, and Tavecchio hasn't done anything to lose it, but I, I still wouldn't be shocked if the kicker's not on the roster right now. There's a really great yeah. battle going on in Kansas City, or, and uh, Ryan Suckup, who's who's been a uh, pretty consistent kicker in this league, is is potentially on the verge of losing his job. You know, that's a name I would really look at if if he does hit the open market. There's going to be other kickers out there with experience that might hit the open market and. You know, if the Lions are unconfident in, uh, yeah, lack confidence in Tavecchio for any reason, lack of experience, whatever it is, then you know that could be in play. That's what we got. Um, still a lot of football to be played before these cuts will be be made. This week it's kind of like a game. The, the Lions are treating it like a game. Starters will pay, play into the third quarter. Um, starters not including Nick Fairley. I can't believe we just made it through a whole video without mentioning Nick Fairley. It's pretty impressive. He'll, he'll play in the first half. <laughs> yeah. he'll, no, he'll, he'll, he'll play. He just won't be a starter, uh, according to what Jim Caldwell said today. Something to watch as we go forward. Uh, for Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Mikey. We're M Live. Keep it right here.